WebDriver.io offers a lot of functionality out of the box, but there are times when our test requires running code in the browser itself. In the previous video, we covered creating custom commands, but that was still tied to limits of the built-in WebDriver.io functions. In this video, we'll take a look at how the execute function allows us to run JavaScript code on the page we're testing from inside of the browser. It works by injecting a snippet of code into the page for execution, similar to how you would run any other JavaScript function from inside a browser window. This is extremely useful for those cases where Selenium doesn't have a built-in option for the functionality you need. For example, you can use it to change the DOM of the page, adding or removing a class on an HTML element. Or you can use it to check that a certain file has been loaded on the page, or even that a specific JavaScript variable has been set. For our example, we're going to test the video functionality of our About Us modal window. We use an HTML5 video element for this, with a custom play and pause button. In our test, we'll open up the modal, validate that the video doesn't autoplay, then click the play button and make sure the video is playing. Then we'll click the pause button and make sure the video is paused. WebDriver.io can't access the state of the video to tell whether it's paused or not, as Selenium doesn't offer that functionality. This is where execute comes in. We'll start off by creating a new test file and save it as video.js. We'll add our describe block, defining that we're testing the about us video. Next, we'll add a before each function, which will not only go to the home page of our site, but also click the about us link to open the modal window. We're using a text selector here, which tells WebDriver IO to look for a link with the text of about us. With that set up, now it's time for our first test. We'll begin by checking that the video is paused to begin with. We'll define a variable called isPaused to store the state of the video, then call the browser execute command. Similar to the add command functionality, we're going to pass in a function that we want to run. Unlike add command though, execute will run this function from inside of the browser, not from inside a script. It can be confusing to understand where our scripts are being run, so I'm going to add two log statements. One will run inside our Node.js instance, and the other will run inside of the browser the Selenium is hooked up to. We'll be able to see the output of the Node.js specific log from the command line, but the log statement that gets run inside the browser won't be visible after the browser shuts down. To get around this, we'll add a browser debug statement, then view the console output when we run our test. Let's run this first test to see the effect. We'll pass in a mocha ops.timeout parameter to allow the test to run a little longer than normal, giving us enough time to inspect the browser console before completing the test. As you can see, the outside the browser log appears in our node terminal, but inside the browser doesn't. If we jump into the Chrome browser that popped up and view the console, we see our inside the browser log. As you can see, the outside the browser log didn't occur here. Hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on where each part of the script is being run. Everything inside of the execute function gets run in the browser we're testing on. In order to figure out the code needed to check the video play state, I'm going to jump into the console of a browser window that I have open to our site. In it, I'll select the video element using the vanilla JavaScript document query selector function. This is similar to what WebDriver IO uses to find elements on the page. Then I'll check the state of the video by examining the paused attribute. If it's true, then the video is paused. Otherwise, it's playing. Our execute script is going to look very similar to this. Let's take a look. First, let's remove the console log and browser debug statements. With that cleaned up, we're going to add that document query selector call to our execute script. Next, we'll return the value of paused. We need to do this because there's a hidden barrier between our test file and the function inside of execute. Anything inside the script can't access things outside, and anything outside the script can't access things inside. We can pass data back and forth, though. You can pass arguments to the execute function, or in our case, return values from that function. These values can be assigned to variables just like any other WebDriver I.O. call. The only difference is that execute returns an object back, with our value inside the value property. Therefore, in our assertion, we're going to check isPause.value and assert here that it's true. Since we're going to be using the same execute check in all of our tests, let's take the time now to make it easier to reuse. 
we'll use the add command utility we looked at the last lesson to move our execute function into a special command we're calling is video paused. In it, we'll move in our execute function and return the value from it. With our new custom command, we can convert the existing execute call over. Just remove the old code, add our new command, then update our assertion. Now it's time for our next test. In this one, we'll be checking that the video starts playing after the play button is clicked. Step one in the test is to click the play button. Then we'll call our custom command and expect the value to be false, signifying the video is playing. Our last test will check that we can pause the video again. Similar to the previous test, we'll click the play button, then we'll wait half a second for the video to play. We don't necessarily need to do this, but I think it more accurately simulates user interaction. We'll then click the button one more time, then get the pause state and run our assertion. That's all our tests. Let's run them to see how they work. You can't really see it, but WebDriver.io is sending code to the browser to execute. The video is playing and pausing and being asserted. I've been covering the execute function, but there's a sister function called selector execute that offers a slight twist. Instead of needing to use document query selector inside our execute script, we can pass in the element we want to use. This element will be provided to the custom function we use inside of execute, where we can access its properties like before. Let's put this idea to use. Back in our test file, we'll change execute to selector execute, then move the selector to this command. We'll then update our function to take in the element via a function argument. Finally, we'll need to convert the element reference to be array-based, as WebDriver IO passes it in as such, whether there is only one element or many elements. Selector execute doesn't help our code all that much in this example, but I did want to mention it as an option in case you find a need for it in the future. That covers the basics of running arbitrary code inside the browser you're testing. In the next video, we'll look at how we can take advantage of the Node environment to improve our tests.